Hi, I'm Analytic Hold, a sickeningly entertaining and educational coding drag queen, and today we are going to be coding an eyeshadow palette using P5JS. It is a graphical programming library. It is great for beginners. There are tons of amazing tutorials you could do from beginners to advanced graphics, all sorts of cool things. I really wanted to make an eyeshadow palette where I could program like the number of uh, pans in it, kind of how many rows and wide it is and all the different colors. And I thought this would be a great tool for um, teaching about arrays. And this is something I've taught in some of my videos of, let's pull out one of my eyeshadow palettes right now. I say, my eyeshadow palette is an array. I've got this whole grid of things in there and I wanna know how to organize them. So I figured if I could program one of these, this could be a great way for when you're learning to code or when I'm teaching coding, or if any of you out there are teachers, you could use this eyeshadow palette as a resource and code with it and use it in your examples. I don't really know how it's gonna go. I am actually recording this live on Twitch. So you can, if you are interested in seeing me make tons of mistakes as I do this, feel free to follow me on Twitch over there. I'm, again, I think I mentioned this in my recap of 2021 video. I'm learning, I'm trying to grow myself, make more content, push myself to learn more. And this is one of those things. I'm gonna live stream on Twitch, doing these different coding projects and see how they go. All right. Let's dive into processing. It's a JavaScript library for creative coding. I've been playing around with it on live stream, trying to build some cool graphics like this that I can animate. And if you actually see the border of this video, we're using this graphic we coded um, in one of my live streams as the background. I thought that could be a cool idea. Code some graphics for yourself. I highly recommend this. And also a huge shout out to the coding train, uh, Dan Schiffman, he's got tons of amazing videos for if you've never coded before, starting off with the computer science fundamentals all for all the way towards building like really advanced graphics, all sorts of like cool things. So the first thing with processing, we've got my canvas. I want to pick X eyeshadows that I want to put in my palette, draw them out and then have like a rectangle surrounding them. That's really like the basics of what I want to get done here. Let's set up some variables, num eyeshadows, and maybe we'll do number of rows. So let's just start with this for now. So then we need to do rectangle. Let's do 40 by 80, each having a radius of 20. That sounds good. Oh, okay, that's not good. This is our first eyeshadow pan. It's a rectangle with a rounded corner. So now if we want to add a bunch of these, we would do just a for loop over that. So for let i equals zero, i is less than the number of eyeshadows. i plus plus x times i. Let's spread them out significantly more. Okay, now we got five eyeshadows spaced somewhat reasonably apart. So then I would put, I guess before this, I would wanna put one big rectangle over them. I'll just start at like five, five, 300 by 100. Okay, this is like eyeshadow palette. Now I'm gonna do some of the math to like figure out where everything should go. We're pulling out some of the variables because it was just getting way too confusing. So let's like plug them in to start X. Not end X, start, start Y. This will be start X plus case padding plus I time shadow padding. And then this is going to be the same. Or no, this will just be start Y plus case padding. Shadow width, shadow height. I mean, it didn't work as well, but now I can change all these variables and it's not that big a deal. So now I can just change shadow padding and it increases. I just want this to be like 1.5, which I mean, that's what it was before. Maybe 1.25. Amazing. We love it. And then this will be case padding times two plus. Okay, this is harder. I'm going to need to calculate this out. I really want to change all these variables to W and H, shadow W, shadow H, instead of shadow width and height because they're so long to type out and there's no autocomplete in this. But there's also no like easy find and replace. Maybe there is. And it's like, okay, there's replace. I'm just having a rant because I'm upset about my choice in variable names. And we're going to get through it because oh, we're taking a deep breath. <laughs> Your variable names are okay. It's okay to have bad variable names. You can refactor later. <laughs> I'm starting this at the start X plus the case padding. Hmm, this is what it is. It's like num eyeshadows minus one times shadow padding plus shadow width. I figured out the math. It was like not centering them because the math's a little weird because 
I'm doing padding, but I'm also starting at the width. When I was accounting for the width, I definitely need the case padding because I want to have the padding on both sides. Let's make the padding like nicer. 10, 10, great. Now it's evenly spaced. But I was adding the whole shadow padding to the width, but the last one, we don't want the shadow padding on the end. We wanted to account for like the extra width of that. I'm not explaining this well. You could write it out and do the code math or whatever, but this is what the answer is. Things are aligned. It looks great. I could even see myself doing a case padding X and a case padding Y. That way I could maybe add like a brush. Get out a brush in there. At this point, I really need to add colors. So let's do no loop and let's just give them like random fill colors. Fill. Oh my God. It randomly gave them like a really chic look. Not only a really chic look, it's like basically colors. Like I would have used four of these five colors today. So <laughs> there you go, random. <laughs> Just, just given, given us everything we need. Okay, what are the inputs that I can use here now? I've got this like eyeshadow code. It runs great. It's like every time it's generating kind of like iconic, randomly generated eyeshadow palettes. That I would, it's like I would buy all of these the eyeshadows brought to you by a random JS. You know, P5JS is our favorite eyeshadow influencer. What do I want to? do with this. A few things I can consider. So I'm just gonna like list them all out. We could make this a class. What would the inputs for that be? We'd have the X, the Y, maybe not with and height. Maybe I'd be more interested in like num shadows. Functions to set colors. One of the things that would be cool is to like talk about like sorting algorithms with this or searching algorithms. I don't know, uh, we'll, we'll think about those. See if we can add some more depth and more like gradients. Could we use Perlin, Perlin noise to generate palettes? That could be interesting. And then also, what if we wanted to have eyeshadow palettes that had like different shapes, so like multiple rows or a brush, or if we wanted them to have names for colors, that could also be good for if we're doing sorting of like, sort them by name, sort them by like red to green. Now, which one are we gonna do now? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> oh, well, let's actually do this because I think this would be cool. Let's create a slider. Create slider. Let's also do fill zero because I wanted to start. I want this first thing to be white, 255. And then I would like the num shadows equals num slider dot value. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, wait, why is this so good? Why am I so good? <laughs> now imagine if instead of your, your first programming assignment was instead of create a rectangle, it's create an eyeshadow palette, do the colors, all sorts of cool things. So many cool things we could do with this. Okay, we set up some random seed, that way we could have it be random every time we run it, but not like flicker every time. And because I'm using a random seed, every time I like change the number of shadows i can change the slider and like have it like be flexible and cool which is super fun and interactive so now we're going to do the fun part of which is making a class we need our constructor let's just like bring in all this oh wait this is cool this is cool if you don't know about this if you hold down option or alt i think i mean you might have to look it up See here, I don't need let here because it said classes don't need this in JavaScript. So I hold on alt and I drag, kind of make a square selection instead of just one. Bam, delete that multiple lines at once. Sometimes you can have multiple cursors. If I wanted to like, la la la, it's a great tip. Pro programming tip. I think I can delete all this. Let's just move all this into draw. Here's the kind of the moment of truth. Let I shadow eyeshadow equals new eyeshadow palette in draw we can do eyeshadow dot draw this is really the moment of truth <laughs> <laughs> oh okay for my cool tip earlier where i removed let before everything i re and then i send real then realized i couldn't have variables up there for some reason i didn't have my variables there so i removed let from them which was fine i thought well, yada 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 here we are we're putting let back in let's run it again still doesn't work <laughs> oh now because i'm in a class gotta have my magical keyword this and this 
is for star x and star y, gonna use my magic mouse trick again, this dot, it's a really good trick if you don't know about it. We're running it again. Why? Why am I such a creative genius? Let's now move it over a little bit. We can still use this. We will have to figure out like all the right ways to do this, but I think this is a good place to stop our video for now. We were able to create an eyeshadow palette using processing P5GS. It's not the most glamorous, but it's a good start. We've got a class for it where we can take in an X and Y for our constructor or leave them optional, optional, which is always fun. And then in our draw function here in our class, we do all the draw stuff. Maybe we'll need to refactor that more or whatever, but we're just kind of getting started. I'll probably do an analysis of like, where are the places that I want to use this and what kind of lessons and then figure out, okay, what is this code? What does this class need to look like to make those things a success? All this code is going to be in the description so you can go and copy it and play around with it, do your own stuff with it, which I think will be very helpful for anyone who's also on their own code in journey. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to stay tuned and hopefully you will come enjoy one of my Twitch streams where you can see the fun as we debug things like this, work on new projects. I have so many new things I want to learn in 2022. I think coding is always about learn, 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 learn new things. And a lot of people don't show their learning process. And it's like, uh, that's really where you get a lot of value from is See how other people learn, I think, because we spend so much time going to different documentation pages. We even had to pull up a YouTube video teaching how to do this because I had no idea what was going on. If you like this video, share it with your friends, leave a like, heart, comment, subscribe, whatever. It was great to have you watch. Thank you. Goodbye.